Welcome to the strange and unusual world of John Dee. During the Elizabethan era, John Dee was a mathematician, astronomer, teacher, astrologer, occultist, and alchemist. He also served as an advisor and court astronomer to Queen Elizabeth I. Through his advisory, he consulted with her on both political and cosmic matters. His dabbling in alchemy and astrology was common knowledge, but a little-known esoteric key is his 007 connection. Dee used 007 as a code in his letters to the Queen, a detail that would later spark the creation of Ian Fleming's celebrated character, Bond, James Bond. Despite being a cult explorer, Dee was deeply committed to Christianity. His spiritual views were shaped by the Hermetic and Platonic Pythagorean teachings common during the Renaissance. He believed that numbers formed the foundation of everything and were crucial for understanding. Influenced by Hermeticism, he adopted the idea that individuals could achieve divine capabilities through mathematics. Dee aimed to foster a global, unified religion by mending the division between the Roman Catholic and Protestant denominations, aspiring to restore the pristine theology once known only to the ancient sages. By the early 1580s, John Dee was disillusioned with his limited progress in uncovering nature's secrets and his waning stature and recognition at court. His initiatives, including a calendar reform, colonization effort, and exploratory voyages in North America, failed to secure the political support he sought, prompting him to explore supernatural means to gain knowledge. He attempted to contact spiritual entities using a scryer, believing this method would facilitate communication with angels. Edward Kelly, whom Dee met in 1582 and found impressive, became his primary scryer. Together, they engaged in spiritual conferences marked by Christian devotion involving purification, prayer, and fasting. Following the foundational aspects of Dee and Kelly's collaboration, their work led to the development of Enochian magic, a system of ceremonial magic based on the evocation and commanding of various spirits. Named after the biblical patriarch Enoch, who was believed to have been given heavenly wisdom from God himself, and transformed into the great angel Metatron. The Enochian language, an integral part of this magical system, was said to be revealed during their scrying sessions. This angelic language, complete with its own alphabet and syntax, was purported to be the language used by angels and thus held the power to directly influence the heavens and earth. The practice of Enochian magic involves intricate rituals, precise use of the Enochian alphabet, and the creation of magical tables that serve as physical representations of the spiritual universe. These elements work together to facilitate communication with angels and command spirits in a structured hierarchy reflective of the celestial order. Dee and Kelly's work provided detailed descriptions of the spiritual entities they contacted, including their names, ranks, powers, and the specific functions of various angelic beings. The magical system they outlined was comprehensive, covering aspects of cosmology, astrology, and the metaphysical relationships between the spiritual and physical worlds. Despite the controversy surrounding Kelly's credibility and the ethical implications of their later practices, the legacy of Enochian magic is significant. It has influenced various strands of Western esotericism and remains a subject of fascination and study for modern occultists and scholars. Practitioners of Enochian magic today continue to explore its potential for spiritual insight and transformation, adhering to the rigorous methods and practices outlined in Dee's meticulous journals. John Dee passed away in 1608 or 1609 in Mortlake, Surrey, England where he spent the last years of his life. Despite his fervent contributions to the sciences and the esoteric, his final days were overshadowed by financial instability and relative obscurity. The respect and influence he once enjoyed at the court of Elizabeth I had waned, and he found himself largely forgotten by the patrons who had supported his earlier endeavors. Dee died in relative poverty, surrounded by a vast collection of books and manuscripts that bore testament to his lifelong quest for knowledge and understanding of the divine. <laughs>